No. No, no need for the ferry. No. You'll be there, get your cheese back. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear! So I'm so sorry we messed up the beginning of the program. There, we do try to take it seriously, sometimes. But when 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 your co-presenter sitting with his uh, with his hands underneath oh, here like that, yeah. knowing and that also he your has little knees hands. going like this, it was hopeless. Anyway, thank you. Could you please take those off now? Right. Comedy moment over. Okay, that's thank it. You. There we are. Well, welcome We're done. to the show, and uh, we Good. have got an awful lot on the show today, including. This terrible question. Did you know that a vast amount of fathers don't believe that the child they are bringing up is actually their own? And that leads to an astonishing 10,000 paternity tests being taken every year. And almost half of those, 5,000 of them, are done in secret. That is, of course, without their partners or possibly the child's permission. Now then, one person who understands the importance of paternity testing is uh, Avi Lazaro. He set up a DNA paternity testing company in an attempt to make it easier for fathers to find out the truth. Hello. And, uh, and he's here now. Hi. Good Very nice to see you. Hi, Denise. Hi. Um, now then, we won't, we won't and we can't talk about your um, story uh, legally, but what I will ask you is, um, I am um, a chap who's Suggest in a relationship, yeah, uh, mm. I've, I am... Um, uh, in a relationship, I've just had um, a, a baby. We've got our baby sort of two or three months old, um, and I uh, and I'm thinking um, that maybe there's not a lot of tr truth in our relationship. I perhaps don't trust my partner that that much. What I can do now is I can take a swab from that child's mouth. I can have that swab tested and find out whether that child is my own. Uh, essentially, yes, that is correct. Um, what you're able to do is, should you um, be in doubt of the paternity of your child. Uh, the, the technology is available and, and you know, obviously the price is quite low at the moment. When I say quite low, it's, it's, um, it's very easy to access, if you'd like, um, the ability to take a paternity test. Who do I have to ask to do, to do this? Uh, there's the guidelines out at the moment and the guidelines are that the person who has parental responsibility is able to make um, the decision on behalf of a child, which is a minor. Um, I believe, in my interpretation of the new legislation which is, which is coming into force, mm. will, that there will be a law basically saying that, the, that you have to have parental responsibility to have, you know. Well, yes, but currently, if I was a single mother who would virtually automatically get responsibility of a child, the person I've said is the father of the child, I might not live with him, but he can come and take a DNA sample of that child without consulting me and go and check out to see if that child is his. And uh, that currently is legal. Um, it, it, there's guidelines in place which say that you need to have parental responsibility. Um, so th the new law will make it um, illegal to be able to do that. But currently it's legal? Currently it's legal to a degree, yes. Um, right. Of course, because this technology is so readily available through the internet and other means, people can do that and people are doing it. You know? Now this is and setting off like an enormous bomb in the middle of what could already be a very tenuous and very unpleasant relationship. I uh, if you discover the child isn't yours, or if it is, or if the mother dis finds out that you've done the test, even though the child is yours, that would be a, a terrible thing to happen. So if I were a father coming to your company, you also <coughs> offer tremendous counselling, I hope, for the person who's coming. Correct. What we realised when we were looking into setting up the company is that there are organisations out there which are purely business organisations. They want to take a sample, do the test and give you your result. Um, speaking to people every day who have real emotions, um, we find out that you know these real emotions, of course, need to be managed. So what we do, we work quite closely with charities such as Families Needs Fathers, uh, with you know um, representatives from the British Association of Counselling and Psychotherapy, and we, we we try and discuss each individual in, individual case with the person who calls. Mm. Um, you know, advise them that you know are they aware that there's a consequence when they get a result which they're not expecting. Um, and certainly when we send out a report with the result, we, know, we, we follow up by actually providing them a detailed contact at a professional organisation. Currently, your company, uh, the results, anything that your company does, cannot be held up in a court of law because they have to be regulated by... Is it the, 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 the Chancellor's yeah, you Office? Yeah, you have to be um, appointed by the Lord Chancellor's Office yes. as, as a company, and certainly we are in the process of going through that appointment. Oh, yes, OK, so you're trying to get it, but you haven't got it at the moment. Correct, correct. Denise, um, as, as Fern said, this is, uh, this is a grenade right into the middle of a, of, of a relationship on, a, on, on uh, very different uh, levels because, uh, obviously, you've got the, the possibility of finding out that the child is not yours. Uh, you also have uh, the, the possibility of going in there finding out that the child is yours and the partner or your wife or whoever it happens to be saying, well, if you can't trust me about that, then you can't trust me about anything. Well, I've been dealing with this for years and years and years. I think, historically, um, there were a huge number of children passed off as the children of men who had not fathered them. 
with the advent of DNA, then we, we moved immediately into a whole different ball game. And the real bomb is when suspicion enters in. That is when the timer starts tick, tick, ticking. And I think if they make it illegal for a, for a parent to do that, or a supposed parent to do that, you don't take away that worm of suspicion that eats and eats and eats at a relationship. The worst possible scenario from my point of view, and I've seen it happen many times and it is a disaster, is when a man <coughs> brings up a child and loves it for a number of years, say till it's 11 or 12, and he then quite often when the child goes into hospital for some operation and the blood groups don't tally. Um, when a man finds out that it isn't his child, some men say, well, I've loved it for 12 years, I'm not going to stop now. Other men cannot do that, because people are strange in the way they feel about other people's children. And I have known cases where men walked away, and a child who had had a loving daddy for 12 years suddenly never sees him again. And this is, we're, we're talking about <clears throat> the, the, the rights of the father to find out um, uh, what, we, what, what, what are yeah. uh, incredibly important here are the rights of the child. Absolutely. Um, you, you can say that it's outrageous that a man should be able to sneak in and take a swab from the inside of a child's mouth and the mother doesn't know. That's outrageous. Equally outrageous, I've had letters from women who have said quite openly to me, um, it could have been any one of three men. I didn't know which, so I picked the most affluent one because that would be good for the child. The child would have a moneyed father. Mm. Now that's not fair either, and the rights of the child are paramount, mm. and I think for the safety of the child, the sooner the truth is known, the better. I have to agree. I think what's, what's fundamental is, um, you know, the, the ethical question is what about the child? Um, I do think it's extremely important at some point for the child to know who its real biological father is. And, you know, if, if there is some sort of um, disruption as a result in the early stages of a child's life, finding out a DNA result, you know, do we not think forward to maybe when the child is 16, 17, 18, and in some cases even 35, trying mm. to seek who their real father is, the level of an anxiety they might feel at that point? Yes. You know? um, so and you also get sons coming, or children coming to you, absolutely. and not just fathers checking on children, Absol but children checking on fathers. All, all kinds of cases, and mm. I have to mention as well, we get you know, about 30% of our calls are women who are calling in to find out because they're not sure who the father is of their child. Mm. You know? And they, of course, want to be certain, because like men have this paranoia, yeah. the women do too. If I could pick up on a point that Fern made, and it's very true if a woman is telling the truth <coughs> and she finds out that her partner doubts her that is a, a different bomb but a bomb nevertheless you need counseling before you even take the test yeah. don't you which is what you do offer well what we do is we <coughs> offer advice to perhaps seek counseling and we, we offer the advice to consider the the emotional result the, the emotions that the result might bring you know at the time somebody wants to do a paternity test in most cases, they've already made the decision mm -hmm. to do so. So all we can do as a, as a company is try and guide them through that process as ethically and best we can as a company. And if you want to use any of this DNA information uh, mm. in a court case, then you have to go to one of these Lord Chancellor approved uh, labs, otherwise it won't be admissible in court. Yeah. That, that it, well, that, that is correct legally. There, there are instances where court cases um, have accepted results from our company, as an example. Um, you know, and I believe my interpretation is it's sometimes it's up to the magistrate's discretion, you know, whether to accept those samples or not. Um, Avi, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, sure. thank you very much indeed. Oh. Thanks for that. Thank you, Denise. Um, paternity testing is the subject of today's phone-in. Do you have a nagging feeling that the child you are bringing up isn't really yours? Perhaps you've discovered that the child child is yours but the lack of trust has now ruined your relationship or maybe the child isn't your own and you don't know how to deal with the situation. Well we want to hear from you and uh, that goes for mothers too. Do you think that DNA paternity tests should require both parents consent? Have you passed a child off as your partners even though you're not 100% sure? Or maybe the results of a DNA test were not what you expected and your relationship has since completely fallen apart. Whatever your dilemma, whatever your feeling about it, give Denise a call 0870 1101 101. That's 0870 1101 101. And Avi, thank you again very My much. My pleasure. Indeed. Thanks. Amy. I didn't know it was even that widely available. No. Uh, now then, it's time for today's competition. Well, as you know, we've been giving away a car every day this week, so four have already been won.